How's it going everybody? Ty Campbell with Tekken Racing. In this video, we are gonna check out the data logging feature on Tekken ESCs with the Hotwire device. Data logging is a very handy feature to make sure that your setups are working well. Everything is in proper order. You're not pulling on your battery too hard. You're not overheating your motor, not overheating your ESC. Uh, and it's just cool to be able to data log a drag pole or a five minute qualifier on the racetrack or just messing around bashing. You can data log battery voltage and stuff like that. So we're gonna take a look at that right now. I've got an RX-8 Gen 3 in my e-buggy plugged into the hot wire right now. So we're going to open up the data logs and check out how all this stuff works. So when we click data logs, it opens up the Tekken data analyzer. You can full screen this guy and it's blank. There's nothing here yet because we haven't loaded any data. So let's go through the menus real quick. Up here in the data menu, we've got download. That downloads any data that is currently in the ESC you're plugged into. Open file. This opens any saved data log files that you've saved off. Save data lets you save the data that you're currently viewing on the ESC into a .tek file so you can view it later. If you click save data, it's going to save it in the pre-canned area in the Hotwire installation files. So it's kind of tricky to find that one, but as long as you're just hitting save and open, it's always gonna open that same location. So that is a good place to keep them. Export run data lets you export the data from the log that you're currently viewing into a CSV comma separated value format. So you can open it up in Excel. That way we can take data that looks like this on the graph, export it as a CSV and open it in Excel and view it as an Excel file. So you've got, rather than a graph, you've got all of these cells. If your brain works better digesting data this way, and this does work pretty good. Every one of these right here is showing a data point across all parameters. So this lets you see every single data point and what the value was at that time of recording. New window, obviously that opens up a new data analyzer window and I'll get to why we can do that here in a little bit. Erase data, this clears all the data on the ESC that is currently connected to the hot wire. You can also press and hold the INCR, the increment button on the ESC itself to delete it track side so you don't have to delete it on here. That way you can just clear the data as soon as you drop the car to go out for a run. Let's open up a data file real quick so we can go through the rest of the settings. So here's some sample data pulled. And as you can see, we've got throttle, voltage, ESC temp, motor RPM, and motor temperature. So these are the parameters that we're recording for this sample data log. Now that we have some data loaded, we can check out the graph menu. So we've got three runs saved right now. A run is any time the ESC power is cycled. So every time the ESC reboots, it's going to start a new data log run. And you can see that these are minute 10, minute 47, 357. And this will vary depending on how long you run it. And the amount of data varies depending on how many parameters you have turned on and the logging resolution. So let's turn on PWM and battery save our settings. These are going to be blank because they weren't on when this ESC recorded this log, but I'll still explain what they do. Throttle. This is the throttle signal from the radio. This is the th signal that the ESC is picking up from the radio receiver system. Depending on where your ESC is calibrated and where your neutral and your high and low endpoints are, that's going to change the signal that you see here. So full throttle on here might not actually be 100. So full throttle on this one was 78.98. So this throttle signal is really something that I don't pay a whole lot of attention to. I pay attention to the one below it, which is PWM. That's pulse width modulation. That is the actual signal coming out of the ESC to the motor, to put it simply. So PWM, if you want 100% throttle, make sure that you see 100% PWM on here then you'll know that it's calibrated properly and you are getting full throttle. Voltage, this is pretty self-explanatory. This monitors the battery voltage. You can see right here that this was not fully charged when this data log was taken. Um, but if you scroll across here, you can see that you pick up some dips and some highs. So that is the battery voltage line. 
the battery line actually monitors battery ripple. Now again, this wasn't turned on when this was recorded, but battery ripple is going to record the high and low spikes on the voltage line. So it kind of goes hand in hand with voltage. If you see some big dips on here, you'll probably see some big battery spikes on this line. High spiking is really not good. If you're seeing, you know, three volts plus on this battery line, you probably have something in your setup that you need to check out. ESC temperature, relatively easy again. This just monitors the internal temperature of the speed control. RPM, that's pretty self-explanatory again. This records motor RPM over the entire run. So you can see right here that when we're pulling a lot of throttle, we're getting high RPMs. Motor temperature is just recording the internal temperature on the sensor board of the motor. So this internal motor temperature is going to be more accurate and a more real temperature than an external can temperature will be with a heat gun. So those are our parameters and what each one of them records. Let's continue on with the menu system up here. Under display, we've got a lot of stuff we can play with. There is the resolution. You can change this from low all the way to high. So right now we're on medium low. If we change this to medium high, you can see that everything spreads out and we're essentially zooming in on this data log to get a better view of it. I should probably mention that while you are zoomed in, or if you have a log that doesn't fit on this entire space, you grab this little position bar up here and slide it. This lets you move up and down the log timeline. You can also hit play and watch it cruise along and do its thing and change the playback speed right here. Next, we have the layout. We can do vertically aligned auto scaled. That is the default layout right here. We can do overlaid. It gets a little messy, but it puts everything onto one graph. Overlaid with scale. Again, it's all laid onto each other, uh, but each one of these scales out properly. Color, pretty self-explanatory. You can change the background color of the data logs itself. Right now it's black. We've got these options. And if we do transparent, this lets you see another window that's behind it or whatever's behind this window. And when I mentioned opening a new window, and overlay them over the top of each other. So this would let you open up two different graphs to lay on top of each other so that you can see both at the same time. Units, this lets you change from metric to English, depending on how you like to view your readouts. The motor, this will change the RPM readout. So right now it's set for two pole. If we're running a two pole motor, that means that it's going to be reading correctly. If we're set for two pole and we're actually running a four pole motor, four pole motors commutate twice as many times per rotation as a two pole motor does. So it would effectively double the RPM output and really skew your data. So if you're running a four pole motor, click four pole, and that will give you the proper readout in the RPMs down here by dividing everything in half. Data points. This is every time the speed control records data. So every one of these points is when we took a snapshot of what's going on. And these are gonna change depending on what your logging resolution is. We have the sample rate over here. The default is set to 0.2 seconds. So every two tenths of a second, it's going to take a snapshot of the data and put a data point on our data log. 0.1 seconds is gonna eat up more memory on the ESC because we're taking data points more frequently. Every two seconds is gonna use up less memory so you can have a lot longer data log recording capability. And I would recommend doing that if you're only worried about things like motor and ESC temperature. The data remote erase setting, if we click this and turn this on, this lets you press and hold the brakes on your car for a few seconds to clear the logs remotely without having to press the increment button or clear them here in the hot wire. So once you pick a sample rate, you just wanna save the settings and hit done. Now we're pretty much ready to go. The only other thing we need to do before we go do the next run is I'm just gonna erase all the data right now. So the data is erased and it also gives you this little hint that you can press and hold increment to erase all the data in the controller. I normally do that track side just to make sure that I don't have any dead space if I turned the car on before I head out to the track. So that is the Tekken data logging system. There's a lot going on in here and how you use it is completely up to you. 
I like to monitor my battery voltage, my ESC temperature, and my motor temperature pretty much for any racing. I don't really worry about the other stuff because I know that it's calibrated properly and motor RPM, since we're not really tuning RPM stuff like we would with a drag car, I don't really ever record that one. So if you guys have any questions about the data log, feel free to drop a comment below and I will try to answer them all. Thanks for checking out the Teakin Clinic data logging video.